Hello dear teachers, how are you all? I hope you guys are doing great. Now, today we will be talking about the Unit 7, Class 1 of Grade 2 English book. Yes, it is talking about preposition. What? Pay position. Preposition, right? So, what is a preposition? Before getting into the deep of the class, you should teach your students about the basic idea of preposition. Uh, now, if I ask you, do you know what is preposition? Now, perhaps some of you would give us the answer or some of uh, you would tell the definition of preposition. But actually, what is a preposition? Do you guys know that? Now, there are many ways of explaining. Like, you could say that into, on, from, between. These things are preposition. Yes, those words are preposition. But actually, what is it? What is the function of a preposition? Do you know that? If you know, then that's great. Now, if you don't know that, learn it. Listen carefully. Because if you understand it very well, then only then you could teach it to your students in that way. Otherwise, you will just go through the books and they will learn what's written in the book. I don't want them to learn what's written in the book. Rather, I want them to learn what you want to teach them, what I want them to learn. So here is the thing, preposition, yeah, it is parts of the sentence, right? We have learned about the parts of speech, so on of the part is preposition. Now, preposition actually give us different perspective. What? perspective. Let me go through this one simple example that would clear everything. Now, for example, I'm standing here, yes, and some people are in this side and some people are this side. You guys are watching the video in front of me and there is another boy behind me. So, now if I am going to do something, all these people will tell it differently. But what I am doing, I am doing the single task. Let's just see. For example, I just do this. Yes, I just clapped. Now look at this. What you will see, you will see I am clapping in front of you. Right? What this guy will say, he will say, beside, this guy is clapping beside me. And what he will see? He will see the same thing. Well, he will say, this guy is clapping at the right side of me. Now, what the guy who is standing behind me will see? He will say, right, well, this guy is clapping in front of me. See, I have done only one thing i just clap my hands and four people from different direction they are telling four different thing about the same work that i did did you get the idea well let me give you a more constructive example let us assume there is a fourth floor building that means there's a building that has got on first floor, second floor, third floor and fourth floor. And each of the floor, one person is there. Now, there is a road in front of that house. Okay? Did you get the scenery? A house, it is four-storied. Four people are standing in the balcony of that house. So, they can see the road. And there is a road in front of that house okay now at the ground floor of that house there is a shop 
okay there's a shop grocery shop people can buy potato flour oil a bit, many other things from that shop on the second floor there is another place where people can live it's an apartment third floor is also an apartment fourth floor is also an apartment so in this fourth floor four people are there now what this four people are doing they're looking at the road now there's a road and now on that road there is two car okay two car is going one is from this direction one is from this direction they are going and two people is walking there by the road one is walking this side of the road another one is walking this side of the road so one is walking here one is walking here he is going this way he is going this way did you get the whole scenario now i wish i could draw it for you then it would have been much more effective for you to understand but i hope you guys have understood it so now what happens this two car crashes with each other that means there is an accident and all of the six people the person who is walking this side he watched it the person who is walking that side he watched it and the four people who is in the building or in the balcony they all have watched it the thing what is the thing accident so the accident happens and these six people watched how many thing has happened only one thing what is it there's an accident took place now think what is the person who is watching this accident from the top floor of the building what he will say for example he want to say you about this accident what this guy will say this guy will say well hey i saw an accident happened down the road why would he say down the road because he is not in the lateral position of the ground or of the road he is above the road so it's below him right that's why he's saying down the road yes so the person who is sitting in the third floor he will say the same thing well i saw an accident down the road or there's an accident below the road now can we say below we cannot literally yes you would say below me in front of me or rather this guy say there's an accident happened in front of my house yes the accident took place in front of the house so you could say in front of my house now the guy who is sitting on the second floor he will say the same thing well i saw an accident happen in front of my house or i saw an accident down the road or in front of my house he could say both thing together like i saw an accident happened just now in front of my house down the road so this is how we can explain scenarios now look all the three guy who is living above the road is saying down the road the accident has happened down the road and now the guy who is in the lateral position or means in the ground floor of the house what would he say well i saw an accident on the road where on the road i saw this accident happened on the road because we are both in the same position same ground and we are on the ground but i am not on the road the cars are on the road that caused the accident see the next person who is going that side he would say it has happened behind him right he would say well i saw an accident behind me where behind me it just happened behind me and the guy who is coming from this side he would say i saw an accident in front of 
may or it if it has happened just beside him you would say beside me now this is how one particular event can be told in different ways and all of the six people are right of course it's about their perspective perception their way they have seen the event or the activities happening they are describing it in that way and in order to explain this perception or my perception about a particular event or something is called the preposition now i hope you guys have clearly understood what are preposition right i hope you will be able to tell this student just like the way I explained it so they will understand the importance of preposition now with the preposition you cannot tell the perception or the exact position exact direction exact situation you want to indicate so preposition is very important thing in a sentence or parts of the speech in a sentence now look at the example in the books we could go through the books after you explain all these things to your students you could go to the book okay this is sandeep's room sandeep is in bed where sandeep sandeep is in the bed is in bed means he is sleeping in between somewhere of the bed or you could say sandeep is on the bed or sleeping on the bed now his books are in his school bags in his school bags it is meaning that the books Sandeep has he has keep them inside his school bag what else we can see from the picture we could see there is a clock what is this clock it is on the table so there is a clock on the table so it is on the surface of something so we say one we we'll learn how to say preposition or how to use preposition in what sense okay so the next pages will give you some preposition and use of this preposition make sure you explain each of it and provide more example than we have provides in the book okay in the book you will see only one or two examples of for each preposition but make sure in the classroom you use more sentences like this and explain why we are using this preposition particularly in this situation that should be your task i think this should be pretty easier for you now from my experience it is observe that most of the Bangladeshi people now even the many educated people here in Bangladesh they fail to find the correct preposition when they are writing or even speaking even I might do some mistakes sometimes right so basically you need to make sure you give a solid idea to students because preposition is a very vital thing for the sentences now go to the next page we'll be talking about preposition of place or that means the preposition that we're going to learn here is talking about different places and in what place or to show or indicate what place we should use which preposition we'll be discussing here throughout this class under the very first one is under something that is under a space or a surface look at the picture the cat is under the house what we can see from the picture the cat is just below the house now if something that is under a surface then we can say under the cat is under the house the ball is under the bed the the man is under the tree i am going under the 
bridge. He is standing under the bridge. So this is how you bring more examples, explain these examples meaning and the next one is over. So the cat is over the house. So when you can use over? Over can be used when the object is in the air and staying above you. So that means look at the picture. The cat is not actually connected on the roof of the house. Rather it is on the air. So the cat is flying on the air above the house. That's why we can say over. Like if somebody jumps over me, he jumps over me. The plane is flying over my head. He ran over him. The ball bounces over him. See, every time it, is, it should be on the air. Only in that case, you could use over. The next one is one. See, if it is connected to the space or a particular area or it's called surface, this is what we can call surface, the roof of a house, the surface of a table or even the road, surface of the road, even, even the mud or the hilltops or on the beach, actually beach area. So basically, if we are standing on a particular surface over it or above the surface, but we are connected to the surface, then we can say on. Look at this picture. It is saying the cat is on the house. The accident happened on the road. There is a clock on the table. The book is on the table. The key is on the table. We are walking on the beach. So every time you are mentioning about a particular surface and you are walking on it or you are on the top side of that surface, you would say on. Did you get that? The next one is next, beside. Next one is saying beside. Beside means I'm standing here, something is here. It's in the lateral position side by side. Side by side is the beside. When something is side by side, you would say beside. So look at this. The cat is beside or next to the house. He's standing next to me. He's standing beside me. Okay, the bus is going beside me, next to me. The bus is moving next to me. The train is moving next to me. He sat beside me. So there are many other examples like this. You produce these examples. You give the meaning of these sentences to students and help them. Why did you say beside? That I said beside because I wanted to indicate the position side by side. Something that is moving side by side, we can say next to or beside. Okay? The next one is inside. Something that is inside of another thing. Like we are living in the house. I'm in my room. The cat is inside the house from this picture. He's in the room, inside the room. It's the same thing. When you want to say in or inside, they are the same thing. They come up with the same thing. You can see in me. Look inside the house. Okay? So inside or in means that is something that is inside of a particular object we are talking about. That means there will be two objects. One object is inside another object. The books are in the bag. That means inside 
the bags. We have kept the book inside the bags. The next one is behind. When something is behind means it's not front of me, it's not inside my side me, it's not over me, it's just behind me. That's why we say behind. This is pretty clear. The cat is behind the house. The next preposition is between. Between means the object or thing we are talking about. It is in between of two different objects. It is in the middle of two different objects. For example, I'm standing here. One person is standing there and another one is there. I'm in between these two person. Let us assume that there's on pole. Here is another electric pole and I'm standing here. I could say I'm standing in between the electric poles. Similarly, look at the picture. The cat is in between the houses. So there are two houses. The cat is there. So if you want to say something like that or point or indicate a position of the object or something that is inside or in between these two things, you could say in between or between. Now, the next thing is above. Above. Above means, yes, it's kind of one, but it's all the weight of. It's above me. It's above you. For example, the cap is above my head. My head is above my head. This is my head. It ends here, right? And something on top of that is above or perhaps there is another thing just within my reach it's above me he is standing above you means somebody is standing on the other floor or the floor above me so if there is a building fourth floor first floor person could say there are three floors above me something that is above you it's not all the way in the air if it is in the air then we'd say over but if it is not in the air somehow connected to a material or somehow connected to surface then we would say above have you got that now let's move to the next prepositions the next thing is preposition about the time at look at this we could say at i always study at night at we can use when we use a very specific time i will call you at 8 pm the time is specified exactly at 8 pm i am going to call you at literally points to something that is very specific and people can know or learn about it just by hearing it like i could say i'm going at house means i'm going at my house if you know my house you would know why i'm going so this place is very defined okay so at is specified defined so i'll call you at 9:15 meet me at night this is how you're specifying time you use at on the other hand you could use on to point time like this i have singing class on monday so on monday i will have singing class but on monday i did not tell you whether it is in morning whether it is in noon or whether it is in afternoon or even evening or it could be even in the night i did not tell at which time that's why i could say one even when i talk about the dates like he born on 12th january we say one yes we have learned those things before but here you will explain more about this preposition next one is in when you use in to point time it actually talk about 
a certain span of time and the event that has happened in between those time. Like I could say my uncle born in 1987. So whoever my uncle is, he born in 1987 in a year. So 1987 is pointing towards a whole year. It has got 12 months and 365 days. It could be any days between this 360 five days or any month between this 12 months. So here I'm just talking about in between this, like I'm in the house, I'm inside my house, but you don't know, you cannot tell where I am. It is just saying that it is in this boundary. So it's actually pointing towards a boundary in case of time or in case of places as well. The next preposition is for. For actually goes with a time frame. It talks about a particular period of time. Like it has started from this period and it keeps going on for this period. It's a long time frame. Okay. For example, you are starting to taking class from 9 p.m. and you are ending the class in 10.30 p.m. You are taking the whole class in 1 hour and 30 minutes. See, so here you could say, I take the class for one hour and 30 minutes. In this example, it is saying, I have lived in Dhaka for five years. Means this guy had been living in Dhaka for five years. So you were taking class for one and a half hours. On the other hand, you could say for sometimes can be used for other purposes like only for you for this reason i did this for you so it is it is telling a cause it's talking about a cause or a reason giving the answer of a reason why did you do that i did it for this reason so for sometimes go with that as well in this case for either you could say it is giving us a reason or sometimes for focus on this span of time a time frame since is just like for like i have been looking for you since monday last so since is also focusing on a time frame but when you can use since when you can you can use since only if you want to explain something that has already started in the past and it is still going on it is raining since monday here john starting in the usa since 2012 means john has started his study in the USA from 2012 but his study is still going on it is not ended in your case you could say I started taking classes in Marcy refugees camps or uh, I started taking classes under Marcy refugees houses since 2018 now, if you started taking classes from 2018, you could say that because this classes are still going on. You're still taking those classes. That's why you would say since. Now, you could say for if you know the exact amount of time. You, you will say since if you don't know the exact amount of time. You cannot measure the time since Monday means you can just count the days now if you want to tell about that for five days you could say i have been searching you for five days if you have a number you use for if you don't have a number you use since this is the very easiest way to differentiate between since and for okay now other thing is before the next word is before before is another preposition it's actually pointing towards the time before means something is just 
happened in the past. He came here before you. Means I have come here now, but he came here before me. I will come before lunch. It is talking about a time that has happened. It is talking about the time that will happen before another time. It is another point of time before a point of time. Did you get me? For example, it is 5 o'clock now. Now 4 o'clock is the before time of 5 o'clock. I hope uh, this is pretty clear. Now if you want, you can explain it in your own language more elaborately. The student should understand before pretty easily if you just could explain that in your Rohingya language. Alright guys, now let's move to the next one. Two. Two actually points towards a direction. It gives us the direction. What is it? Direction. I'm going to south, I'm going to north, I'm going to east, I'm going to west, I'm going to school, I'm going to home, I'm going to market. So all other things we know where the market is, we know where the shops are, we know where the mosque are, we know where the school are, where the school is, we know where the areas are, where, we know where the sea is, or we know where the south, east, west, or the direction. So every time you want to point a direction or direction towards a particular place, you say, Two, I go to school, I go to mosque, I go to madrasa, I go to there, I go to here, I go to home, I go to market and so many other places. If you are going towards that places, you should say two. Okay, so it's a very common preposition actually. We use all the time. The last one of this class is by. By is used to explain a particular time. When we say by, we mean that we will complete this task within that time frame. It will not go beyond that time frame. If I say I will meet you by 5, means I will meet you before 5 p.m., not after 5 p.m. Okay? That means I will see you by the road means I will somehow see you by the road. Now there are other uses of by. We'll talk about those things later. But here learn the time related preposition. So here when we want to say that I will do a particular task within this time frame we say by. Right? Look at this example. My homework will be ready by 5 p.m. It is saying that I will finish my homework before 5 p.m. Did you get that? It should be pretty easier to understand. Now, I will meet you by 3 p.m. That means whatever happens, I will be, the, be there where we want to meet by 3 p.m. Before it is 3 p.m., I'll go there. That's what is by 3 p.m. means. So by time means I will do it within this time. I will not go beyond that time. So you could say I will meet you by 3 p.m. Means you will talk to me by 3 p.m. Not after 3 p.m. Okay. I hope you guys have understood it pretty well. And please go through some other resources regarding preposition if you want to learn more. And first you learn perfectly about these things, then you explain it to your students. Because the way you will teach it to your student, they will learn it that way. Do not go through all these 16 prepositions in a single day. They will learn nothing. Rather take one, two, three, four. Four would be very standard. Take four prepositions and make as many examples as possible in the classroom so that the student understand the use and then let them make their own sentences using this preposition. That's how you make them 
learn it properly. I hope you've got it. After that, there will be exercises for the students to do. So I suggest that you take this class one in three classes. So there will be 16 preposition. You teach four, four, or six, 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 or whichever is the convenient way of teaching. Then you go through the exercise in the last class. Okay, I hope you got it. Alright guys, see you with the next class. Bye-bye.